Hey fam, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Amy if you're new here and today I get to do my first book review request. Uh, my Thorn emailed me and asked me if I do a review of The Darkest Hours, the expanded edition, and I was like, um, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Curiouser yeah. and curiouser. Okay, so for full transparency, I'm of the grassroots era where you, you know, show the suits that you want more. So this could not have happened at a better time in my life. I had just finished reading Sylvia Moreno Garcia's The Beautiful Ones, and while I love her writing, if it wasn't for that fact, I would not, I, I would have DNF'd the shit out of that book. It's so proper bullshit. And I don't like so proper bullshit of any kind. It kind of drives me nuts. And there's a character in that story called Valerie that I wanted to, like, just knock her head off of her fucking shoulders. But whatever. Um, so I came out of that just, like, just feeling like I'd been in a complete reading slump because I had been. <laughs> so this was definitely much needed. Like, I was really needing some horror in my life. Between the covers of Darkest Hours, you will find academics in distress humans abusing monsters, demons terrorizing people, ghostly reminiscences, resurrected trauma, and occult filmmaking. <laughs> Ranging from satirical to dreadful, these 16 stories share a distinct voice, urgent, sardonic, and brutal. This expanded edition includes a new forward by Sadie Hartman, Mother whore, which by the way, fucking A, fucking A. Listen, some, look, okay, I've said time and time again, I'm a bit finicky when it comes to spoilers and shit, right? And a lot of forewords, a lot of those like author introductions and shit like that have a tendency to spoil the shit out of what you're about to read. That was the problem that I had with, was it We Live Inside You? Those author notes, um, and that one came before the fucking story and usually spoiled the shit. So it was just like, I'm not even going to bother with that shit, Jeremy. Um, and this one I'm happy to announce, they come after the story. So you can just dive right the fuck in without having to worry about that shit and dodging and bobbing and weaving. And, and for me, being finicky also means I'm, I'm casting no judgment when I say this. Please know that. There's your disclaimer. Because I love you. <laughs> But for me, pretty much everybody spoils shit. That's why I'm usually reading while I'm going through booktube videos and playing catch up and shit. Because, and shit. Because I'm going to listen up to a certain point and then I don't want to hear anymore. And I know myself. I know that about myself. <laughs> Sadie is someone with this forward who, while she puts you right into it, she doesn't spoil anything. Even when she's referencing the stories, like she doesn't spoil anything and it's, it's beautiful. So right from the get go, I was like, damn, okay, let's go. It's just, I wish that I could do that shit as a writer. You know what I mean? Where you can really put people in that place where they're ready for something without ruining anything for them. Like how movie trailers tend to tell you every single fucking thing, right? But you don't know the full context unless you know the story. And it's just frustrating as a moviegoer. Um, there's none of that. And it's just like, <sighs> that was a really fucking good choice to ask her to do that, dude, seriously. And then with that first story, Hair, I was in the kitchen. That's the one I was reading when I was trying to make tea and just turned into a bitch in the kitchen standing there reading a fucking book and being like, oh. <laughs> it's very distracting. Anyway, moving on. This updated release also features 17 of Thorne's essays on horror cinema, which covers films by Toby. It is Toby, right? Am I an asshole? I might be an asshole. Hooper. <laughs> George A. Romero, Rob Zombie, M. Night Shyamalan, Wes Craven, and Dario Argento. I always want to lengthen that last name like an asshole, among others. I 
was trying to keep a mental log of my favorites, right? And I, when I finished it and I was like, all right, let's make my notes and shit. I was ready. I realized uh, I like them all, like all of them. I was as equally distracted from life and invested in all of them. There was one story where I was like, eh, and I couldn't even tell you which fucking one it was, all right? I don't, I don't know because I devoured that one too. And there was a story where <laughs> I was giggling and stuff, and I was really worried that I was I was being a bitch. But then I read the authors, and I was like, okay, it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> so yeah, I, it was funny. <laughs> it worked. This was perfect for me because my attention span has been shit. My like focus and all that is just shit. And normally, writing wise myself, I have difficulty stopping and just like letting go and stuff. And I've been trying, that's as a writer, something I've been trying to, to be better about, being capable of writing short stories. So I've been noticing this shift within myself toward it. So that's just another way where it was fucking perfect for me in my life right now. Um, like seriously, Mike couldn't have asked me to do this at a better time. And these, the um, essays on horror cinema and stuff, it's like, like, Mike's writing makes it really obvious that this motherfucker is an academic, okay? I see you. Um, but I never felt condescended, you know what I mean? I felt like I was having a conversation with a friend. Like I put the book down, having finished it, feeling like I went on a ride with a, with a buddy of mine, and now I just wanna watch all of Rob Zombie, like rewatch all of Rob Zombie's movies again for shits and fucking giggles, just cause I fucking can, and it's been a while. <laughs> you know, like I really, really enjoyed this. Five out of five stars, highly recommend. Um, I almost did that thing where I didn't want it to be done. And I was like, no, you can just order another book, Amy. Don't do that. You're gonna finish it because you're enjoying this. And that's not to say I'm not enjoying 20th Century Ghosts, okay? But for some reason, I just still haven't finished it in like 17 years. <laughs> 17? I haven't finished it in seven years. I think I need more caffeine. The final two fiction stories, however, I went, I feel like I went from being like a viewer, a participant or whatever the fuck to a, like, <sighs> listen, there was even just like this, what was it, fusion. Fucking fusion. First page has the line, but you know damn well everyone only gets a limited supply of apologies, even from their best friends. I was like, do I know you? The fuck out of here. And then I read the next one and was like, do I know you? So I went from feeling like, you know, uncomfortable at times cause it's horror to very exposed and vulnerable. It's like, how the fiction shit left me and shit and just exposed. <laughs> so yeah, five out of five for me. Thank you, thank you, Mike, for the request. I will never forget you, even if you want me to. <laughs> I even like spent a moment, like really late last night, or it was really late for me, but it was probably like, you know, midday for you. <laughs> just tripping out on the freaking. <laughs> going on there that looks really fucking cool just you know art <laughs> all right so again five out of five highly recommend it's a great collection of shorts great collection of essays that will make you feel like you're hanging out with a buddy you guys have a wonderful day i will see you later take care oh my god Oh my god, I can't even feel my right foot. Holy fuck balls, Batman. Oh no. Oh no! Listen, I wasn't really exercising and working out very much for a minute, and then I'm back at it, and my legs are just like... Oh god. <laughs> I got a hobble shit.